Welcome to worship here at Church of the Redeemer. I'm Pastor Halter. So here we are today at church, invited and gathered back in church and also gathered in our homes, worshiping in person and on Zoom, meeting God in a various ways in different places of worship and prayer. Welcome wherever you are, here in church or at home. Welcome to your church. As the worship continues, I ask those of you on Zoom to stay on mute to avoid sound troubles. If you are on Zoom, you heard what happens when I don't mute my Zoom account just earlier. You missed it here that attended. Uh, <clears throat> you should be able to access the bulletin for today in an email I sent out yesterday if you're on Zoom and at home. We are not going to have the bulletin to the side of the image today. Those of you gathered in person, thank you for wearing a mask and please be mindful of social distancing. We are keeping the windows closed and invite all of you that are gathered to sing, al sing along with the hymns as long as you stay masked. Those on Zoom, feel free to sing the hymns maskless. As long as you're not in a public place, of course. It is a real privilege and honor to be worshiping with you today. It's Thomas who runs the technical side of things. Chanel Cook leads our music and Miss Maury Fimster is our liturgist. Please join Miss Fimster in a call to worship. Good morning. Please stand if you're able for the call to worship and remain standing for the opening prayer. Happy are we. Happy are we. Happy are we. Happy are we. The opening prayer. Open unto me, light of my darkness. Open unto me, courage for my fear. Open unto me, hope for my despair. Open unto me, peace for my turmoil. Open unto me, joy for my sorrow. Open unto me, strength for my weakness. Open unto me, wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me, forgiveness for my sins. Open unto me, tenderness for my toughness. Open unto me, love for my hates. Open unto me, thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen.
The children's moment today comes from a book by Grace Byers called I'm Enough, pictures by Kitora A. Bobo. Like the sun, I'm here to shine. Like the voice, I'm here to sing. Like the bird, I'm here to fly and soar high over everything. Like the trees, I'm here to grow. Like the mountains, here to stand. Like time, I'm here to be and be everything I can. Like the champ, I'm here to fight. Like the harp, I'm here to love. Like the ladder, here to climb. And like the air, to rise above. Like the wind, I'm here to push. Like a rope, I'm here to pull. Like the rain, I'm here to pour and drift and fall until I'm full. Like the moon, I'm here to dream. Like the student, here to learn. Like the water, here to swell. Like the fire, here to burn. Like the winner, I'm here to win. And if I don't get up again, I know that I might sometimes cry, but even then I'm here to try. I'm not meant to be like you. You're not meant to be like me. Sometimes we'll get along and sometimes we'll disagree. I know that we don't look the same, our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame, but that does not dictate our worth. We both have places here on earth. And in the end, we're right here. In the end, we are right here to live a life of love, not fear. To help each other when it's tough to say together, I am enough. And now we hear the epistle. The epistle this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be rep misrepresenting God because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that, he, that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Word of God for the people of God.
gospel this morning is from Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, the coast of Tyre, and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at the disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The gospel of the Lord. Allow me to pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. There are Icelandic experimental musicians called Severos that I listened to a lot 15 to 20 years ago. And interestingly, two months after I moved to Cleveland in 2013, they came here to the city and played at Jacob's Pavilion. It made Cleveland quite a welcoming place for me. I was able to go and listen to one of my favorite bands from Iceland live in a large venue downtown in this otherwise unfamiliar city. One of Sigros' song is named Vidrarvel til Loftarasa. It addresses hate, fear, and hope in a deep and complex way. The name itself is a reference to a sentence from a weather reporter in Iceland, as he talked about the weather in Belgrade during the war in the Balkans. Today is a good weather for airstrikes, he said. Using a positive Icelandic weather phrase, and we don't have many positive phrases about the weather, <laughs> to describe killings of civilians in a most casual way possible. The translation into English does not do the weather reporter's inappropriate and cynical comment any justice. This notion that an evil deed can look good if it is described using pleasant words. <clears throat> the music video for this song was one of the strongest manifestos for the LGBTQ plus rights in Iceland at the time. It was a difficult coming of an eight story dealing with hate, fear, and masculinity in a touching and a challenging way. The lyric explored or explores hope and disappointment and ends with the sentence that best as good have escaped that near tower. God's most magnificent creation is a new day. Because in the midst of airstrikes, disappointments, killings, broken dreams, hate, and fear, there must always be a hope in a new beginning, a hope of resurrection, hope of God's reign breaking in, breaking in in a new and exciting way. The Black experience in this country is often described as a story of injustice and humiliation, hate and hurt. And for an immigrant like me, it surely sounds like an apt description. The black narrative in this country tells a story of a forced and inhumane immigration, tells a story of slavery, 
a story of an oppressed minority being killed, suffering from violence and injustice, experiencing hate, living in fear, and living with a designation where Black people were said to be less than in the first article of this constitution when it was written. But the Black experience is not only a story of injustice and suffering. In the midst of it, there has always been more. Or in President Obama's words, as he describes his first church experience at Trinity United in Chicago, President Obama says, in that single note, hope, I heard something else. At the foot of that cross inside the thousands of churches across the city, I imagined the stories of ordinary black people merging with the stories of David and Goliath, Moses and Pharaoh, the Christians in the lion's den, Ezekiel's field of dry bones. Those stories of survival and freedom of, and hope became our stories, my story. The blood that spilled was our blood, the tears our tears, until this black church on this Friday seemed once more a vessel carrying the story of people into future generations and into a larger world. Our trials and triumphs became at once unique and universal, black and more than black. In chronicling our journey, the stories and songs gave us a meaning to reclaim memories that we didn't need to feel shame about. Memories that all people might study and cherish and with which we could start to rebuild. Quotation ends. The black experience has often reflected the Bible, biblical story filled with hope and survival, hope against all odds, a hope constantly being rebuilt. A hope preparing for a new day, not sitting idle and waiting, but standing with God and calling for God's reign. A hope that Jesus is teaching in the Beatitudes will come true. This new day is not fully here and we must strive, survive and prepare. There are 150 years since slavery was legally abolished and only 60 years ago, discrimination was still the law of this land. Even though the law has changed, the underfunded segregated schools are still real. The discrimination is still reality in the housing market or when it comes to economic opportunity. Black neighborhoods often lack basic services. And we all know all too well about the poli police brutality against black and brown citizens of this country. But in the midst of this ongoing justice, we have heroes speaking the word of a new day, speaking of a mountaintop vision of resurrection, reminding us there is hope. In the words of a Unitarian minister, Theodore Parker, fighting for ab abolition of slavery in 1853, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. You might ask, how dare you talk about hope, a new day, a new beginning in the context of the black experience? You are from Iceland, you are as white as it gets. What good is hope? Some would claim what we need is to get angry. We need to rise up and break it all down. President Obama recognized this anger and said, the anger may not get expressed in public in front of white coworkers or white friends, but it does find voice in the barbershop or the beauty shop or around the kitchen table. At times that anger is, is exploited by politicians to gain up votes along racial lines or to make up for a politician's own failings. That anger is not always productive. Indeed, all too often it distracts 
attention from solving real problems. But President Obama continues, but the anger is real. It is powerful and to simply wish it away, to condemn it without understanding its roots only serves to widen the cast of misunderstanding that exists between the races. And how prophetic are President Obama's words? Truly, we have seen the anger exploited, seen when the anger combined with mob mentality becomes destructive in ways that brings nothing new, but expresses only frustration and lack of all hope. Though, to be honest, we probably have seen this destructive anger more in the white circles of disappointment than from black citizens of this country. But President Obama tells us to recognize that the anger is real and that many are angry for a good reason. And ignoring this anger or even condemning it doesn't lead us anywhere. And President Obama continues. But what we know, what we have seen is that America can change. That is the true genius of this nation. What we have already achieved gives us hope, the audacity to hope for what we can and must achieve tomorrow. Quotation ends. Which brings us to two today's scripture texts. The Christian story is a story of hope. We are called to hope for the impossible and unexplainable resurrection. We are called to live in a trust to God that, make, that will, be, will make all things new. We are called to participate in creating a new future, bring about a new story, not only his story, but also her story and their story. We are invited to participate in making God's hope reality for all. God's hope. Reminding us that the best doesn't God's most magnificent creation is a new day, new hope. May we believe that. Amen. Amen. Before I move into the pastoral prayer, I ask that we all keep in mind the difficult situation in Europe at the moment, especially on the border of Ukraine and Russia. Those are really scary times for a lot of people. And those people need our prayers. The people in Ukraine and in the towns near the Russian Ukrainian borders on both sides. Please keep them in your prayer. Let's pray. Spirit of abundance, God of grace, mother of hope, we pause to remember stories that are all around us, but so often passed over. Stories that when told are shared because of what someone is, not who they are. God, this month in our nation's character is Black History Month. Help us to realize that Black history is all our histories. May the day come when these stories are so wildly taught that no month needs to be separately divided. Give us hope for a day when we as a people make different choices, 
May we come to see a day where the prison system because, becomes redemptive, not punitive. A day where the legal system learns to focus on the facts and not the colors of our skin. A day where all our schools are equally well-funded as the needs demand. May our role models be allowed to excel when they thrive and not be taken down for the rich heritage. We know this will require a shift in power. And this can be scary for some. Give those full of fear hope. May we come to know grace so that our hearts will not be hardened to the pain around us. There are so many beautiful stories needing to be told God, and we need to get the chance to hear them. Widen our vision so that the history that is shared this month will be known as our common history too. Amen. And now, there is the time of collections, collection of tithes and offerings in theory. If you're on Zoom, you can go to our website. There is a give online button on the front page. And we have, when you leave the sanctuary today, we have the box in the back for your tithes and offerings. Let's hear the offertory. <laughs> Let's pray the prayer of dedication. God of new life, out of the abundance of our lives, we offer these gifts to you. Through your blessing and your willingness to share, may these offerings become a source for hope and love in this church family and in the community beyond us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now we move into communion uh, to enable people to hear me. I'm going to try to use I, this mic that is hanging out of my ear with my glasses and my mask. So I'm not sure how this will work. And it went. So please give me some time to prepare so everybody can be part of this. Uh, those of you that are home, 
feel free to bring uh, something to drink and a piece of bread and join us in the communion. The Holy One be with you. Open your hearts to the one who is love. Let us give thanks to God who gathers us together. It is always right and a good and a joyful thing to give thanks to you, creator of heaven and earth. Gracious God, you brought all things into being and called them good. You formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fails, your love for us remains steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name proclaiming together. God of justice and love. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives and liberate those who are oppressed. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. We proclaim Christ's death on that cross for our sins and not only our personal sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. On the night in which Jesus was arrested, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to the, his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave the cup to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy God, we long for your spirit come among us. Bless this me, may your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come Holy Spirit, come, amen. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be you. You will be done. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial and deliver us from you. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, feel free, everything is ready. As you come forward, I will use the tongue to give you the bread. And I ask you to take the cup and the bread to your you and not remove your mask until you're sick, until you have sat down again. So welcome, everything is ready. Those of you on Zoom, feel free to have communion at your house. <laughs>
Let's pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Nourishing one, your gifts renew us. Through this test of love, may the Spirit send us on a journey with a faith that is brave. Let no institution of narrow thinking hold us back. Make us people who boldly pursue justice for all and tend gently to the world's pain. Amen. receive benediction. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connections, our concerns, or our care for each other. Our service to each other, to the world, and to our God continues. Until we are together again, be strong, be true, be loving. Amen. Thank you.